Samsung has announced the Galaxy A54. Pre-orders start March 30th with release of the device a week later on April 6th. We'll talk about the specs of the device and what we know so far. There's one big omission that we're going to talk about, but it's roughly the same as last year. Price is going to start at $449, which is the same as last year with a, up to $250 of trade-ins, or you could do a phone, whatever trade-in. 6.4-inch 1080p display, 120 hertz, which is the big one that people crowed about last year. That has returned this year. 5,000 milliamp hour battery, that's the same. 6 gigs, 128 gigs of storage, that's the same. Micro SD up to a terabyte, which is something that people really loved last year as well. Android 13, One UI 5.1, which I like a whole heck of a lot. We'll talk about that. Four major upgrades of Android and five years of security updates. IP67 dust and water resistance, no wireless charge. Big omission in the kind of preview material that they sent out, the media stuff. No word on what's powering the A54 5G. And you go online and you'll see, and most people are saying it's going to be the Exynos 1380, the presumed successor to the Exynos 1280, which was the major hang-up of the Galaxy A53 5G. That phone, I, everybody keeps telling me, it's like, oh, oh, they fixed it with updates. Uh, uh, just go on there again and try it again and, and tell us what you think. Ugh. That phone, for whatever reason, can't walk and chew gum at the same time. It's a phone that if you give it a very specific task, it can do it well and it could push the display at 120 hertz and it's nice and all the rest of it, but then it'll slow down for the stupidest reasons and it'll be annoying as possible. I don't get it. It's very tough to make a bad device in the $500, $400 price range now. Samsung managed to do it last year. That was the most disappointing device of the year and it's only because I was expecting so much from it and I was really looking forward to it. Because Samsung had dialed in their software, had made it really nice, and to, to give us something that has some of the flashier features that Samsung offers in the $450 price range was really exciting. And the Exynos just let us down. That was trash. The battery life wasn't that fantastic, and the performance wasn't that fantastic. I know a lot of people can say, oh, I own it. It's fine. I got it cheap. It's great. Yeah, it'll be fine in a vacuum. It'll probably do everything you want it to do and be just fine. But when you start comparing it to other devices... In the price range, it comes in last, or pretty darn close to the bottom in terms of performance. The Pixel 6a, in my mind, wiped the floor with the A53 5G. And if you're uh, someone who needs a specific spec, you know, 120 hertz, I need expandable storage. Okay, well then, the Pixel 6a didn't wipe the floor with it, in your mind. But I think overall, as a consumer, if you don't have a horse in the fight, you know, if you don't have a dog in the fight, You'll, know, you'll, you'll objectively say that the Pixel 6a had a lot more going for it performance-wise overall than the A53 5G. So I really need to see something out of Samsung this year because I'm going to get excited again. The design looks nice. They have a little bit of a refresh there. They're offering it in more colors this year, which should be pretty nice. Looks like a good phone. It's going to have the Samsung camera stuff again. It's going to have 120 hertz. And that, the one thing that annoyed me last year was people jumping up and down about the 120 hertz. A phone shouldn't exist if they don't have a 90 or 120 hertz uh, display. Well, let me tell you something about that. The 120 hertz is only nice if the processor powering the phone can output the 120 hertz consistently. And the Exynos 1280 couldn't do that. There'd be random drops in frames. And that's annoying. There's nothing worse or more jarring than being bombing along at 120 frames and enjoying your nice smooth experience and all of a sudden it's just dropping because it's a mess and it gets bogged down and by bogged down I mean you're downloading an app and getting a notification at the same time heaven forbid the phone has to do two things at once couldn't handle it that was my problem with the A53 5G that's why I was disappointed with that phone so they got a lot to prove this year I'm rooting for him. You know, everybody, you could go back and say, oh, he's a Google fanboy saying the Pixel 6. Go back and watch the videos from the past couple of years. If Google comes out with a stinker, they hear about it. If Samsung comes out with a stinker, they hear about it. If Apple dumb, uh, does well, the number of dumb things that they usually do, they hear about it. We're equal opportunity offenders around here. Because that's what it's about. It's whatever your latest product is, show it to me. Does it make sense for the majority of people out there? And I am rooting for Samsung to do a good job with the Galaxy A54 5G. Why? Because having used 
One UI 5.1 on the S23 Ultra and knowing how excellent it is in comparison to everything out there on the Android side and quite possibly on the iOS side. I would love to see a capable One UI 5.1 device starting brand new at $449. If they could give you a 120 hertz refresh rate, if they could give you a halfway decent performance, that's what I'd love to see. Because Samsung, I think, said it themselves. The sales, and you can see it year over year. The flagships get the most amount of attention and they, they have the flashiest stuff and they get a lot of views on YouTube, people watching. But if you look at the sales figures for the entire year, globally, every year, it's just, you know, 20 different iPhone models, okay, going back 100 years. And it's the cheapest offerings from Samsung and maybe you get a little bit of Xiaomi in there. The cheapest offerings from Samsung. So there's going to be a lot of eyes on this device because I think it's the upper range of what people are going to be looking for in a Samsung device. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully they do the job. And if they don't do it again, they're going to get bashed again because it's not like they're forced to use Exynos. There's nobody telling them, you know what, you got to put an Exynos in. There are plenty of excellent mid-range Snapdragons that for that price would do the job. In fact, performance-wise, last year, the Nord N25 G, I think, smoothness, all the rest of it, beat the A53 5G, and that was running a Snapdragon 695. So even a, a tier below what Samsung would probably be putting on the Snapdragon side in their A-series devices. Why do you do it? Why do you do it? Don't get it. Hopefully, this one performs well. If it doesn't, they're not going to find much sympathy here. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Lucious day.